till shade is gone. Till water is gone. Into the shadow with teeth bared. Screaming defiance with the last breath. To spit in Sightblinder's eye on the last day. By my honor and the light. My life will be a dagger for Sightblinder's heart. Until the last day. To to Shiloh Ghoul itself. itself. This is a Dagger for Sightblinder, a podcast focused on all things Wheel of Time, with your hosts, Sarah Lucas and Adam Tricola. Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Dagger for Sightblinder. May you find shade this day. You too, Sarah. I actually, I want you to have as much shade as everyone else today. Wow, you are very generous today, Adam. <laughs> well, you didn't you didn't wait and let me tell you how much shade I want everyone else to have, but oh. it's okay. I'm glad you presumed. Me I did a presume. Kind, a kindly individual. I did presume. I guess I shouldn't have. Right. I mean, I, I'd prefer if you just zoomed. Like if you just didn't, you didn't pre anything. I didn't pre anything. Right. Which actually we're kind of zooming right now. We're on Zoom. So yeah. um cool so we're back we had a little a little tiny hiatus but it's all it's all good yeah yeah i I got sick and i'm still a tiny bit sick but i'm much better now Mm -hmm. and i i am excited to talk about wheel of time with you yeah for the benefit of others and we're gonna finish the book the first one yeah the end of this book is so weird it's wild like what a ride it really is oh so before we jump into that we i we also want to do our shameless plug real quick guys so on podbean if you guys could give us a follow we would really truly appreciate that on youtube we have all the links to all these things in the either video description or the show notes whichever medium you are consuming this at uh just please on youtube giving us a sub and likes for whatever for all of our videos that would be great youtube is probably a way we're going to be expanding on this channel if, if or for the show if we do that um so getting us a good solid foundation with a lot of with a lot of subs would really help um mm-hmm. uh, you can join our discord server which we are have which exists so you can like, go there and talk to us uh it, leaving us ratings like five star ratings on itunes or anywhere really but itunes is probably the most impactful it is also something that helps us tremendously is that about it? Did I get everything? You got everything. You nailed it. Nailed it. All right. All right. Cool. So uh, what, what are we talking about today? Yeah. So there, there really isn't show news, which I'm not surprised about because the show's not happening currently. Yeah. It's not on the air. There's there's not a lot. There's no no season two premiere date. So I feel like that's what most people want to know at this point. That's what I want to know. Sure. Uh, well, yeah, like I'll be really interested to hear if they, when they wrap, when they do the wrap party mm-hmm. and stuff uh, and they, they start post-production and stuff, because then we'll have a more, a better indicator of when we're going to be able to start, you know, expecting it, when they're going to release it. Right. But for now, we got nothing. Yeah. We have people speculating on whether or not the old Matt actor mm-hmm got fired because he was afraid of the vaccine or something right so, afraid of the vaccine is is an awkward way of of saying it but like just who cares like it's speculation and frankly like not, not something yeah. i care about anyways yeah so i mean i i'm not choosing to look into it any further because it was speculation on a site that I don't know if it's repeatable and there was no actual named source. So um, on that happy note, <laughs> I think we can go into the book because that's really the, the chunk of everything we're going to be talking about. And we're going to finish the eye of the world. The eye of the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why I pronounced it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you did either. 
<laughs> you, you're like, that's not a choice I would have made personally, <laughs> but <laughs> rude. <clears throat> I didn't say it. Oh, you're right. You didn't say it. You're absolutely right about that. So, right. uh, yeah, I, and so we're, we're going to talk about the eye of the world. And actually one interesting thing about the eye of the world that I meant that I noticed the other day, uh, I, I was listening to a, there's this podcast called the, I think the fall of civilizations or something. It, it's a really cool historical podcast. It talks about the different, the rise and fall of various empires and stuff. But the, uh, one of the things referenced, like one of their old, uh, like one of the old civilizations, like old myths talked about the eye of the world and mm -hmm you know it wasn't that similar to to like this really but i just thought it was interesting like the eye of the world isn't a term that's completely like just made up by robert jordan I'm, my guess is that he had some kind of historical basis for it hmm i never really would have thought of that uh, I, I don't know i just yeah i wasn't like looking for it, it, it they were just talking about and the eye of the world i was like wait what kind of makes sense when you think about it sure well yeah like th this is a very mythological kind of th this feels mm -hmm. it feels like we're walking into a myth and you know it's like those weird old uh, like how did creation happen it's like so such and such god ha like laid down and his ear split in two and it out came an animal and you know it's like and this animal had four heads and each of those heads gave birth to such and such. And, you know, like that created the directions of the world. And you're like, what? What's even <laughs> happening? Like, it's like the, and it's like, and that's how the world came to be. You, that like that, and that's the crap you feed to your kids. And they're like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just buy it. Yeah, they did just swallow it hook line and sinker they're like can i be a priest for this this sounds really cool <laughs> <laughs> oh man um so, and, and this this feels a little bit like that though right like this, it does. this whole thing because it's just bizarre there's a lot of weird things that happen and you're like i guess i'll just keep reading because like not knowing what it what's at the end is worse than what's going on right now well, I mean, yeah, especially these last few chapters, they are. So just for clarification, we're going to talk about the last four. So chapters 50 to 53. Right. Um, and they are a wild ride. <laughs> like, I had to, I remember I listened to them. I finished the book. And then I went back and listened to the last few chapters again, because I did not understand what was going on. It was just all over. Yeah, so they're they're in the eye of the world right now, or at least the little realm place with the green men, correct? Right now. Yes, yes. So he is taking them into the eye of the world, and yeah, yeah. So it's... they're in the middle of this sickly blight, scary, weird place, and they come mm -hmm. in, and it's like this paradise of greenery that, mm -hmm. that isn't tainted with the blight, correct? Yeah, and the, and Rand even realizes that, like he notices that. The, the green man has clearly been working to stop the blight from coming into this into this particular area um so it's it's great Nynaeve and Egwene and Moraine are getting flowers braided into their hair and from the green yeah. man and they're just walking along and they're he's taking them in well, it's oh. so weird. It's like, okay, so they just got in a big fight with a bunch of weird creatures on the other end. And it's like this depressing, scary situation mm -hmm. of like, they're in the middle of like the deepest part of the, of the eye of the world, or, or sorry, of, of the blight. And there's worms chasing them and there's all these concerns. And then they walk in and Moraine's getting flowers into, braided into her hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, you go from like this, this situation of, certain doom to like this fanciful creature doing weird things saying weird things you know it's Moraine almost, is, what's that it's almost like like <laughs> i feel like the green man's just a giant stoner <laughs> yeah yeah he's like join me in this <laughs> yeah like in that's this adventure the, yeah that's just like the the 
the change of pace is so drastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, he hasn't had to worry about a worm biting his face off for quite a, some time, I'm guessing. Right. Um, yeah. So he's kind of leading them towards the center of this like green area that they're in. Um, and they've got this arched opening. It's got the symbol of the Aes Sedai on it. And mm-hmm. that in, it, inside of that is the eye once they go through that. And he won't go with them. Oh, that's right. So he's he's just got his own weird little land that he, yeah. he governs. And he's also kind of like, the, he, he so he kind of caretakes the entrance to the eye of the world. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, he won't, he won't go into this, uh, archway. Okay. Um, but you know, they, they all do except him. The rest of them do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, there is a pool of water there that Maureen explains is untainted Satan. Sidine. Nice. So yeah. And, and she says, so, um, that you will either be able to mend the dark one's prison so you can keep him contained or break it open which i think is great great foreshadowing (laughs) yeah yeah so so she explains that yeah so Mm -hmm. it's anyone's prison apparently Right. Like it's anyone's to break. She doesn't know who is going to mend it or whatever. She's, right. Right. One, one just, of you can do this. So one right. of you can ruin it all for everyone. And, and she just knows that Matt Rand and Perrin are Taviran. So they have right. to be there. They have to stop. They basically have to try and stop him. Otherwise, um, the shadow is going to cover the entire world. And they have to be there at that moment because that is where the Dark One is going to strike. Um, which now that I'm thinking about this, I'm really curious, just in general, how Moraine ha- knows all of this information. Just in general. Because it just is wild to me that she's there by herself in terms of the Aes Sedai. But... I mean... It's okay. She she knows a lot of things. Uh, here, here's the thing about about Moraine. I think that that I really respect is she she's not like she's very one dimensional in terms of like her mission. She really wants to make sure that she her mission succeeds. She sees it mm-hmm. as uh, you know all important for everything, but uh, you know to for everything for everyone to be able to uh, uh, you know for for the world essentially. But uh, beyond that, she's also She's also very learned. Like she's she's taken the time to study a lot of like quote unquote end times kind of information. And she actually even she's also been to the eye of the world one other time, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. She said like she's been here once, and that that's what's surprising about it is that no one has ever been twice. Right. Okay. So until now. I- I think that they had said that in previous chapters. So, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I think, I think she probably just knows a lot based on, you know, she's like, well, this, this touches the dark one's prison. She's looking for the dragon reborn. She's looking for all that stuff. And the dark one's prison probably is one of the most relevant things about the dragon reborn anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just, it's just fun. Like it's, She's just clearly got all this knowledge and I find it amusing that she's by herself. You know, land not included. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You'd think that she'd have more more Aes Sedai to support. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, okay. so so we're here. We're, we're at the eye of the world. And then there are two Forsaken that show up. Um, just randomly just randomly like and they show up and they are just so smug and arrogant like like the most typical smug and arrogant bad guys hmm. yeah that's, that's the vibe i got at least uh, i think you're right is it one of them like they can't talk or something so you have I believe Aganor does most of the talking and then 
Balthamel. I'm probably saying it wrong. Balthamel, yeah. Um, but you know they, they they're they're just acting like they can't lose. It's just so smug. Um, but they they are there, and they basically just have this little battle, and um, yeah. <laughs> They're clearly very strong, though. Like, they toss Lan aside real easily, and Nynaeve <laughs> just loses it. <laughs> um, yeah, so Lan's tossed aside, and actually, the imagery here is really nice because it just describes him landing in kind of like this heap, and his hand is outstretched towards his sword, and, you know, he's just on the ground and then mm-hmm. Nynaeve decides to charge after I think it's Agonor that tosses him aside I can't remember to be honest with you which is bad but um, Nynaeve charges right after him with like a dagger and he also just picks her up and I on it, it almost felt like he was going to just like crush her neck and face in because the description of him just grabbing her um anyway there it's just everyone is just fighting everyone's fighting here agonor and balthamel are fighting um but agonor says something about needing to teach the emmons fielders about obedience like again it's just really arrogant and smug which i guess i shouldn't be surprised about yeah Oh, there, there's the Forsaken, and, and Robert mm-hmm. Jordan really does like the idea of like good versus evil to mm-hmm. some degree. Like so, so the, the a lot of times, the the bad guys do end up being a little one dimensional, especially here. I mean, so these guys are are messed up because what ended up happening was when like this this is all stuff that happened uh, that they explain later in the books. Though I don't mm-hmm. think that this is the I think they mention it a little bit here. Um, but like when they created the Dark Ones prison this time, and like put the seals up and everything, uh, these two Forsaken were the closest to the edge of that seal. And so they were only like, whereas all the other Forsaken were protected from time issues, these two were not all the way protected. And so you have them as like old men kind of. Right. Yes. And that makes sense because later on, as we get into this, they're described as looking more youthful and able-bodied and also just more solid in general yeah so so yeah they're i I think only one of them talks though so if it was agonor that Mm one that that says that uh he's gonna protect them Mm -hmm. then probably benthamal is the the wordless one but yeah they um it's just such a weird thing too so they they show up like the heroes you're like oh we're gonna have like a chapter of respite this will be good like we can rest before the final battle and then the forsaken just show up and they're like yeah like what we're gonna do we're gonna like kill you guys and maybe we'll like torture some of you maybe maybe we'll do other darker things to some of the people here um you know it's you don't get a respite you just get this really weird time where he's putting flowers in moraine's hair and then right and then moraine's like uh, actually later this chapter i have an appointment to go get tortured by one of the forsaken <laughs> yeah that's uh that sounds about right um yeah. and like that's it's just even more sad by the way because all this is happening and balthamel and the green man kind of you know get into it and start fighting and he Balthamel just destroys him, like just sets him on fire, which is dick move. Awful. Um, and he the green man, he kind of like he ends up destroying Balthamel as well in his kind of like final act. Um, and he in tip I shouldn't be surprised, he's the green man, but in not shocking fashion he he kind of just turns into this mound of ash and where they're fighting and he just leaves an oak tree behind yep massive oak tree yep just turns into to this oak tree um 
so all of this is happening. Moraine starts attacking Aganor, and she's yelling at all of them to run. Um, and Rand, this is just the funniest interaction. Rand ends up pushing Nynaeve aside and kind of telling her to run. He keeps yelling at her to run and flee. But right before this is happening, he's looking at her and he realizes. Yes, sorry, Egwene. Sorry, Egwene. I did not mean to say Nynaeve. Um, And, but he's looking at her and he realizes that she's trying to channel to stop Agnor. Like she's focusing so hard and he describes it as her using her like puny power i think is he like puny was actually wor- used as the word um mm. and then she's all mad at him in typical Egwene fashion that he tries to stop her from doing this um but yeah so he, anyway he pushes her one way into the forest and he runs the other way and the last thing you hear in this chapter is he hears moraine screaming and that's it chapter's over okay so goodbye moraine goodbye moraine by everyone, Rand's on his own, running away. Yeah, like let's, let's run away from Forsaken. Like, what was what was Moraine's like end game there? She's like, I'm gonna just die to this Forsaken, and everyone else should run so that he can like hunt you down piecemeal. Well, it just doesn't make any sense. How do you think? I I don't know. She's like, so go accomplish your duty somehow. Right. Do Without something. my guidance. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What would you say you do here? What, what do you do? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so the next chapter, <laughs> chapter 51, Against the Shadow. So Rand is still running away from Agonor because he's the only he's the only bad guy left at this point. Um, and they're kind of like on this hilltop, edge of a cliff type thing. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, and he chases Rand, talks to him about Shia will again is super arrogant and he starts talking about how he could kill Rand right there himself if he wanted to um so why don't you bud right and uh exactly like you said they are um older they're like they're not in their prime and he and Rand notices this Agonor's got this like he describes it as a glowing rope attached to him and he notices that the rope is getting thicker and Agnor is also getting youthful and more solid look it's super weird this this whole this whole thing is just a wild wild ride <laughs> yeah the thick rope thickening yeah. rope that's not yeah, yeah it's uh, becoming more uh, a virile young lad mm-hmm. so they are fighting each other over this rope like i Rand realizes he's gonna have to, I guess, sever it from him or something. Um, yeah, you don't get a rope, no one gets a rope but me. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, take his rope, but what's also kind of interesting here, though, is like Rand just kind of wishes that he doesn't want to be there anymore and then is not. They're in a, they're in a mountain pass, and that's when you've got um, he, you realize he's kind of watching this battle unfold, and there's the borderland landers are fighting the Trollocs, and um, he's I guess actually there because they notice him being there, and there are a ridiculous amount of Trollocs. There are um, um, drag drag car in the sky. Am I saying that right? Yeah, a drag car. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, Rand just—it it doesn't explicitly say he does this, but you know, he gets all hot and heats himself up, kind of thing, and you know, maybe mad. And then lightning just magically hits all the drag car in the sky, and they fall. Magically, I mean, magically. The, yeah, not poweredly. No magic, yeah, magic, magic. He used the he used, he used the true magic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So the yeah. Tro- the Trollocs are sh- once this happens, the Trollocs you know are- shift direction to go after Rand, and then all of a sudden he's not there anymore, and he's in the chamber with Balzamal. Balzamal. Yeah. 
yeah it's just a it's a very strange it's you know it's a lot of and this is i think why it was so confusing for me was that it was just a lot of hopping around like just you're here and then you're here and it felt very jarring to it's it's like a dream it's like one of those stupid visions that i keep bemoaning and talking about how stupid they are right except i don't i guess it's not except yeah except it's real yeah you think maybe it is but you're just not sure it's it's just tricky to um it was tricky for me to follow it like I've listened to right. these last few chapters probably three or four times now. Yeah, they're they're trippy a little yeah. bit. They're they're very strange. Uh, the I think the thing that's most interesting uh, about it to me is, I mean, really, I guess we'll get we'll we'll get more into it as I mean, it's still the the weirdness hasn't ended, but <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of it is just like it, it feels like rand isn't at the right power level it's like okay so you know typically you play like a video game and it's like oh you can't go into that area you're not level 51 yet Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and rand is is like oh well crap i'm like level seven (laughs) but he's there anyway yeah it's like literally like that any video game you play and you're like i'm not strong enough to go to this boss yet right And, and so but and robert jordan's like Oh, but you know what? We we can we can create some weird like mechanical constructs in, in this world mm-hmm. to make it so that Rand is artificially that strong, right? Right now, and and so like sure, let's give him a wish power. You know, yeah, if, yeah. I remember if if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a merry Christmas. <laughs> so, you know, in this case, Rand is like. Yeah, I wish that the Trollocs were gone and, mm-hmm. you know, like I could save the Borderlands. I wish I could just be on this other hill and not be around this arrogant a-hole of a Forsaken. Yep. I wish I could talk to Baalzaman and his chambers too, for some reason. Then here we are. Yeah, and Christmas is like, done. Done. Done, son. Done. So yep. <laughs> he's there and he notices another cord, but this one's black going to Balsamon. hey look another rope another why, rope. why did these forsaken have ropes mm-hmm. it's very weird but he also notices that he has like a white rope coming towards him yeah he has a rope that's that it's and that's just, the it's, it's the enabling rope it's the rope that allows him to teleport and do all these things look, and make wishes yeah yeah mm-hmm. so break his heels together yeah exactly so he's noticed this and Balsamon's black rope is much bigger than his own and is devouring. <laughs> his Schwartz preparing. is bigger than it's, his. <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing. Um, his but, big black cord. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he ends up showing him visions. Uh, Balsamon ends up showing Rand visions of Nynaeve and Egwene and his own mom, Kari being tortured by Merdral and you can tell that it's this uh vision that really that really uh wrecks Rand so yeah but he ends up making this blade out of white light it's a lightsaber Mm -hmm. of sorts (laughs) maybe yeah (laughs) (laughs) maybe uh so that he can sever this cord it's wild it's like, does everyone have a cord? Like, is yeah. So, Baalzaban, who he thinks is the yeah. dark one, right? Uh, like, he's he's just like, all right, and then he just uh, slices the black cord, and Baalzaban, who's like this level like two hundred fifty character, and mm-hmm. Rand is like level seven, you know, but but he's like, oh, you know what we'll do. We'll give this top, like top level boss that, that's like an end game character. Mm-hmm. And and we want we needed some way to beat him. But we the ice to die is is not here, but we have a shepherd here who thinks, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> let's but 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 the bad guy has to lose somehow. 
Right. But let's give them cords and make the bad guy unable to defend his own sword or his cord. Like, right. like there's just this huge flaw. Like, oh hey, look, hey, look, there's a cord. But like, Rand, chop, chop the damn thing. Right. Which is exactly what Rand does, and then, and then the whole place is on fire. Why not? Why not? Just add fire in. Um, burn Balsamon, and. While this is happening, Rand gets knocked unconscious by something. Well, because he's only level seven. He's only level seven. He's yeah, not like, supposed to be at this boss yet. Like any random thing that the boss does should just knock him the F out. You know, like he's he's still at the point of the game where he's not gaining enough hit points to actually be substantial. It's just like, you know, eventually once you hit like in the 30s of levels or something, it's like, oh, he actually like, he's starting to get his tank health, you know, like, but uh, before that, everyone's just kind of got their own weird generic tiny gains on every level. So it doesn't matter that much. It's mm-hmm. more like a morale get morale boost. Oh, hey, you leveled up. Yay. Don't do anything extra. But, uh, you know, like that's, that's where he's at right now. He's just like, just gets knocked out. Yeah. For no reason. Like, be, well, because he's way out of his depth. Yeah. Um, Balsamon's like, damn it all. Like, why <laughs> why does this happen? Why did that happen to me? Like, I, I'm better than this. Right? He's level 51 and Rand's level seven. Yeah. Like, everything, everyone should have been, everything he did should have been way more impactful than Rand. Mm-hmm. But it was not. <laughs> but but it weren't. Yeah. It's, it's l- ludicrous. So, but it, yeah. So, um, in chapter 52, neither beginning nor end um rand wakes up and he doesn't really remember much he remembers a battle and there's a burning smell that's kind of near him and he sees agonor i guess dead burnt and um yeah he starts stumbling around he just knows that he needs to find Egwene but he doesn't know who Egwene is like it's very like it's it's like he just got this crazy onset amnesia uh, yeah facing facing that level of boss is is always going to be a little traumatic for someone mm-hmm. as as shepherdish as he is <laughs> so he he knows he needs to find Egwene doesn't know who Egwene is um and then sees you know, a, a girl underneath a tree that kind of looks over at him and realizes that that must be her. That's Egwene. Um, How does he know? What if it's? I have what if it's? Uh, what if it's the Green Man? Apparently, according to him, it's not. It's Egwene. He just magically knows. Mm. He knows. Um, and Nynaeve's there. And Moraine's there. And it's. This is also really jarring, to to read and slash listen to because it's very obvious that he doesn't realize who anyone is because you're getting these descriptions of them as if you're Rand clearly because it's from his point of view where he's describing what they look like and it's like the first time he's seen them <laughs> and he's like that guy could be a blacksmith yeah so, like if, if wolves could be blacksmiths right if they one. could so yeah, anyway, so he's there. Um, and then eventually he does explain he, and realize that he channeled in mm. order to defeat the dark one. It's the dark one that he, and he tells them this, that he killed the dark one. It's over. They as well. Yeah. So um, they end up leaving um, and they, the group leaves after this with, broken pottery broken pieces of pottery which, which is important stuff mm-hmm. it is important stuff um and a chest which is also important and a white cloth yeah so yeah so um, do they do they say what the broken pottery is do they explain that yet i don't remember them explaining it hmm I feel like maybe they, uh, I don't remember. It's been if, a while. If they, if they did, I don't remember it. They do explain that they open the chest and it's the horn of the leer in there. Um, and they mm-hmm. 
do explain that the uh, white cloth is the dragon banner or banner of the dragon. Yeah. So maybe they do. But yeah, I think. Well, so so the broken seal, uh, the the pot, broken pottery turns mm-hmm. out to be because this isn't a secret for long, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's seals to the dark one's prison, and they're broken. Right. So that's not sealed. Well, you know, there there are more than one seal. There's more right. than one seal to the prison, but that seal, one of the six, mm-hmm. is broken, and it's made out of metal that is theoretically thought to be unbreakable quindiar i think quindi yeah. right yeah so they leave and as they're leaving the blight just starts coming in to you know kill this area that the green man had been protecting and now is no longer being protected because he's an oak tree right and what good is an oak tree i like, shade oh yeah yeah, which you need more of, apparently. You're always looking for more. Right. Never satisfied. <laughs> It'll totally stick handle that, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so in the final chapter, the wheel turns. This is so, like, the, the beginning of this chapter is just so classically, in my opinion, loyal. Like, the, the blight is still coming in, and the area is dying like leaves are falling off the trees it's very obvious that it, it's coming in and loyal's just so upset that this is happening and he like refuses to let the green man's grave fall to this blight and it's just so it's so pure like this moment and he just does his little tree singing mm. skill on this oak tree to help protect the oak tree from the blight so that the leaves stay healthy and everything the blight can't attack it doesn't Um, he call him like tree brother or something like that yeah he keeps calling him tree brother it's just such a nice moment in such a weird 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 time (laughs) but i thought that loyal was back on faldara getting stabbed by pad and fane oh wait that's this show sorry <laughs> uh while Perrin watches and does nothing yeah Perrin's still doing nothing just yeah. like in this chapter these chapters <laughs> correct Perrin's doing nothing so that's so oh funny. man um but yeah he, so thought, like, he thought about doing something and, and then did nothing yeah yeah uh, all right so all right. so they, they 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 leave basically they they keep heading south lands leading the way um and then they get to Tarwin's gap where they realize that like there's been victory yeah yay How, who could yeah. who could see that happening right you know yeah. who could rand could that's one of his three wishes <laughs> like a genie yeah <laughs> it was, yeah it was, it was helpful yeah yeah he was like there's no place like Tarwin's Gap. There's no place like Tarwin's Gap. Oh, and then he and then he shows up and he's like, magic. <laughs> Not power, magic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So they head back to Faldara. Um, and everyone is celebrating that they've won. Um, and Moraine you know, shows the horn to Lord Egomar and then wants to go to Il- Ilian to take it there. I guess that's where she thinks it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's where the hunt for the horn yeah. begins. And she mm-hmm. wants an escort. So that that's what she's asking for. Um. Anyway, so a week later, this, this is kind of nice that Rand is practicing with Lan his sword fighting skills yep. um and then he meets with Egwene and tells Egwene that he's leaving he knows he's going to be a danger to everyone around him since he's now channeled um she wants him to go to Tarvalin and he refuses and 
promises he's never going to channel, but he's also never going to return home. So, right. yeah. And they're having this conversation, and the entire time, Moraine is eavesdropping on them from Agamar's private garden. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And she says something really cool at the end, I think, though. Um, yeah, she says something along the lines of the dragon being reborn. Yep, she's like... Mm-hmm. She's like, yep. Yep. The dragon's been reborn. Yeah. So, and that's it. That's the book. And a really weird way to get to the ending. Right. Well, eventually, like, Randall's keep leveling up. And eventually, these weird fights will look less artificial. Right. In theory. I totally didn't spoil any part of any other book, I'm sure. Right. Not at all. Maybe, maybe vaguely. But I mean, here's here's the thing. I, I I don't know how you can do like it's such a weird thing to do as an author, like putting yourself in a situation where, okay, there's there's these extremely menacing, incredibly powerful beings from a different age who have an understanding of the power that only someone with you know several years or decades could hope to match, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, and he pits them against a totally unschooled, like un, like a character that doesn't know anything. He's got good potential, but it's like, just because I'm tall doesn't mean I know how to play basketball. You know, like I, I, <laughs> a ton of people used to say, like, "Oh, you're tall. Like you must play basketball." I'm like, well, I, you know, like I'd have people pick me for their team basketball teams preemptively before they knew anything about me, and I'm like. You guys don't realize, like, I'm, I'm actually good at other sports, but I don't know basketball. And that's the same with, with Rand. It's like, he, he's got good potential, but you shouldn't just assume he can kill a Forsaken on his own. Right. You know? Right. And, and so it's a very strange thing for an author to do, to just, like, throw, throw a random character in and be like, oh, they're, you know, equivalent power levels. Look, look, like... The, look, the shepherd won. What an upset. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, and it, it, it to highlight that, like, not only is he a different power level, but he's also just way more naive because he's convinced he's killed the dark one. Right. Yeah. And, and Moraine's like, uh, oh, don't, don't assume he did something cool like that. Yeah. So he's got a lot of, a lot of leveling up to do. He does. He does. He'll keep he'll keep grinding those levels though. Don't don't you worry. Horrend. Don't you doubt. Yeah, he'll he'll get there. I just this is a very strange thing to do. Like instead of kind of sheltering the character somehow and making it so that he's not doing these extra crazy boss fights mm-hmm. immediately at the end of the book of book one, especially if you're intending this to be a multi-book series, like maybe give him an opponent that actually seems like he could have a chance of beating. I don't know. Right. Instead of this drastic. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And, and giving us like, but, but look, he used the root, the ropes, uh, the, the cords of power loophole. Like, congratulations, man. <laughs> like, why, why aren't there more power? Like, why can't he see his own cord of power after that? Because it's, it's unnecessary. Yeah, it's just weird. It, it was a very weird ending. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. That, that's it. The, it's one of my least favorite parts of any part of this whole series. I, I mm-hmm. won't lie. Uh, just because it, it makes... The thing is, th- there are a lot of things that he that happened in the series that don't necessarily make a huge amount of narrative sense. And a lot of it can be explained through Tavirin, which is nice. And, and frankly, a lot of things do make sense. I, I mean, I, I couldn't enjoy a series that didn't have a lot of good rational things happening. Uh, like if, if, if this madness, if this fluff were to happen constantly throughout the series, I'd have lost interest. But, right. uh, you know, this is one of my least favorite things because there's, there's just not much reason behind it. It just feels, it feels like the illogic of a myth. Yeah. And it's just very... Um, like I found it very convoluted and hard to follow and mm-hmm. yeah but 
Robert Jordan gets better and right. the story gets better. And right. I'm still on enjoyable. board. We're good. We're still oh, reading. For a second, I thought we just ended the podcast forever. No, not yet. Good. So what are we reading next? So next we are going to read The Great Hunt, which is book two. And I think we're going to try and do six, the first six chapters next week. Nice. That'll be good. We, we need to whip through the, that book, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. The, yeah, I agree. Yeah, let's get through Great Hunt. And then we can get to the real, real meaty, awesome books, which is three and four and five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And six and seven and eight and nine and ten. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I, I'm sorry. That was a weird flex. I, I, I would hope you know I know how to count. Yeah. So. One of us does. Uh-oh. Out of the three of us, one of us can count. Okay. <laughs> that was contrived like crazy. <laughs> that was contrived. Oh boy. <laughs> on that on that happy note. Oh. Uh, we well, skipped the Mac. We did. Who's the Mac? I don't know. They're all weird in this this area. Could we just do like a one time? Robert Jordan. Just a one time, like this is out of protest for weirdness. And uh, and and I have a podcast with you. Like my tolerance for weirdness is fairly high. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> I mean, they're not annoying in this in these chapters. It's just weird. Yeah, the characters are like, oh, I'll do things as I normally would, but but why but, am I doing them? Right. And Robert Jordan's like, there are And where reasons. am I doing them? There, there are reasons. There are who, reasons. who am I doing them? <laughs> it, like, it, in a lot of ways, like, Rand is like, who am I doing them? Like, he's doing them. He doesn't know who he is, though. Oh, poor Rand. I, yeah. I don't know who you would pick as the most annoying character other than Robert Jordan. Yeah, because everyone else is acting honorably. They're doing well. They're contributing. Right. I'm sure Egwene's doing something annoying. She's always annoying. She's, she's getting all mad at Rand, as usual. As per usual. Yeah. As per usual. Yeah. I mean, we could give it to Egwene just for old time's sake. I feel like she's going to end up being the Mac for the whole book. The whole book? Well, the book's done. I know. So we're going to have to tally these. And t- next week... We'll also try to have, we'll give you the final verdict. Who is the Mac for the whole series? Or not the whole series, but for just book one. Just book one. So whoever we said the most times, I guess. Yeah. All right. I like that. That'll be good. Yeah. Um, Any final thoughts? Um. I'll, I'll say this. So I, I liked a ton of elements in this book that like, I really liked the parts where they split up. I liked the parts mm-hmm. where all the characters were growing, you know, Rand exploring Camelin. There's a lot of really interesting, cool stuff in this series, uh, you know, Nynaeve tracking uh, Lan and, you know, them having their weird relationship and like tons of really cool stuff actually happened here. And uh like I love this book it is also just a weird like it's the first book of a series and you can really feel it in this one especially Mm -hmm. a lot of fantasy books will have a really strange start and they'll they find their their path and move along and this is no exception so whereas I'm kind of harsh at the end here uh, it's not I, I don't hate the series by any stretch like book two is maybe not my very favorite book either but Mm-hmm. I feel like he gains momentum as he goes along and I'm looking forward to talking about the rest of the series. Yeah. I'm, I'm still really enjoying this series. This was a very weird way to end the first book, but it did not slow me down. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. I wouldn't call you slow. Thanks. Appreciate that. I yeah. think. Not to your face. Rude. What? I'm telling you that I wouldn't tell you something mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's it. I think we'll be back next week. We will be back next week, I shouldn't say, I think. Yeah. 
We'll be back. Yeah. With more, with more unkindness. All of the unkindness, apparently, and shade. Yeah, unkindness is actually brings some shade, you might say. It does. <laughs> or does the shade bring the unkindness? I don't know. You're getting too philosophical for me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, yeah, so I think that's all we've got. All right, let's call it good. All right. So thanks, everybody, for listening and or watching, whichever you choose. Adam, thanks for being unkind. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, on that note, everyone, may you always find water and shade. <laughs>